So I've been using Cloud Code for over you know last two weeks, and I am impressed by the amount of things it has been able to do and how quickly for my projects. And the best part about Cloud Code is that if you have an existing Cloud subscription, it does work with the same subscription. You don't need to subscribe to anything else. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Cloud Code in case you've been writing a lot of code and either ways you just want to explore what Cloud Code is. So I'm going to go to Cloud Code in here. And then I'm going to show you how to install it. So in order to install it, this is the simple command you need to run. Now I am assuming that you have the basics of the uh, web setup here, meaning you have Node.js installed in your system. And in order to install Node.js, you can follow this guide here. You will need to install it in your system in case you're building Node.js based projects. Or you can download the package from here and install it. You can also do it with for Windows, Linux and you know different OS if you might be working with something else. So we will just copy this command for now once Node.js is installed and I'm going to open cursor here. And since I'm on Mac, I'm also going to open terminal in my system. You need to paste this command here, which will automatically install Cloud Code in your system. And from this point on, you're all set. After the installation is done, you can start, you know, working with your projects. So how do I use Cloud Code in my projects now that we're done with it? So in order to show you how it works, I'm going to create one project from scratch in this video. What I want to do is I want to create a portfolio website for my own profile, which essentially enables me to, um, you know, every time someone asks me about who I am and what I do, I want to share that profile with them so that uh, you know they get a high level understanding of who I am and what my profiles are. So let me just quickly set up a project for you here and this is going to be Next.js based project. I'm going to go to Next.js org and then I'm going to copy this uh, page. You can see there's an option to copy this page. Let me copy this and open cursor. Now in cursor I want to start a new project. So I'm going to click on open project and then go to code and I'm going to create something called portfolio going to click on open here and this is my new project in which i want to use cloud code in order to write my code now this also assumes that you either have vs code or cursor in installed we are not going to be using any ai features of vs code or cursor in scenarios you want to use either of them it's fine you want to use any other id it's fine so cloud code works directly in the terminal and you don't need any special access in order to make this work you don't need cursor either you can work with vs code or any ide where you write code it's completely fine going to start new terminal here um, and I am going to make sure that I hide the camera so that you see my commands just give me a second okay so now what we need to do is we need to type cloud now since it's already installed for me it's automatically going to start a new interface for cloud like this but if it's not installed for you it's going to tell you to log in using either your cloud account and you need a pro account to use this or you will need to use your cloud API key in order to make this work the best part about this is that it works with my existing cloud subscription so I don't really have to buy a new one or something else outside of this ecosystem and it works better than cursor in certain scenarios so i'm going to paste this documentation here and you can see it automatically does paste the file and then i'll write my prompt help me create a portfolio to show case my projects and work i am an ai instructor with over 12 years of experience in ai building and scaling products right now i work with online platforms like udemy coursera and code academy for boot camps i've taught over 100k plus students both offline and online prior to this i built my own ai projects my expertise is in generative AI, project product management, startups, SaaS, product growth, and AI. So this would be my high level prompt. Then I can give some links about my portfolio. I'm going to do, I'm going to add my Udemy link in the portfolio. Links to add will be Udemy link and then Coursera link. I think I have, yeah, there you go. This is my instructor profile on Coursera and Code Academy link. These are my bootcamp based projects. And what I can also quickly do is add my YouTube channel. 
this is not me this is my channel so let me quickly go back a decade in ai let me add this i will also go ahead and add my twitter and my linkedin i think these should be enough to work with right now and the linkedin profile very very quickly i also have an instagram goyashi.tech all right so i think to begin with we can work with this what we will need to do is first initialize our next js project which i don't want to rely cloud code on but cloud code can also do it from scratch so i am going to just make sure that i copy this prompt and i have it somewhere in you know the cloud code kind of digresses so this is how my command looks like i'm going to copy this piece and i'm going to add this in my notes for now in case i lose access to this so cool this is how my prompt looks like uh, at this point and so there are two things I want to do. First, I want to start from scratch where I don't want to install a Next.js myself. And second is where, you know, I start from scratch. Now, I obviously wanted to create portfolio folder with the Next.js command as you see here, which is unfortunate because I went ahead and did this anyway. So let's see what cursor does or what we can also do in order to kind of make things easy. Directly run the initial commands ourselves. So I'm going to do CD code and I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to use npm for doing this. All right, so let's just copy this and I'm going to say portfolio and this should start the Next.js app creation process. We will be able to do very, very quickly. Uh, in that scenario, we don't need to post the uh, Next.js installation guide here. I can just paste this piece, right? So this piece only. All right, I'm going to copy this for now because I will need this when I'm running the project. Cool. So let me take a look at terminal. The next year's app is installed. I'm going to go to CD portfolio. The reason why we do CD is to go inside of that folder. And again, all of these are basics. We will open cursor again. Um, I'm going to close this cursor. I'm going to do cursor portfolio again. And this time I think we're in the right folder. So let's just do Claude and yeah. Then what I'm going to do next is right now I'm not able to see my next JS files, which is kind of strange. Uh, so maybe I'm doing something wrong here. CD code, CD portfolio. So the issue is with cursor, I believe. So what I need to do is delete the old portfolio file that I created. Right now it's automatically taking the old file. So I'm going to do new window again, this time open project. I'm going to go inside code and you can see I have two portfolio folders, right? Which is causing the problem. So let me delete this one and I'm going to open this one here. And you can see I have the projects in this now. So cool. Now I will start Claude again and then paste the command here, right? Which essentially has all the things that I need. And then let's start the Claude code. Now what this will do is this, it, it will first take a look at your, you know, uh, entire app and then create a to-do list and start working with the to-do list. Now there are a couple of things that I like about this is that it always creates like a to-do list to work with. And I think cursor also has started to do it now, but because this works with my existing Claude subscription and cursor has gotten a bit more annoying when it comes to the subscription side of things, I feel that this is way more uh, better for me because I can use the same subscription. I don't need to resubscribe to an application. So that way I appreciate how this works and works in the same subscription per se. Plus it also has certain, uh, access when it comes to let's say editing uh, your prisma database editing your files editing or even running your terminal code right so to run the app also it, it will take your permission so for example it will say can we do can we run the development environment and once you give that access it, auto it automatically also runs the app for you so if we go to localhost 3000 now my app should be running here and I think in super simple terms, this is majority of what you can do with cursor, you know, cloud code right now, which I personally, in my opinion, is good for building something from scratch. While cursor is good to work with certain files, cloud code is good at working with something when you're starting from scratch. And I think one of the things that I've also noticed is that it kind of also understands which files to edit and very, very accurately in majority of the scenarios. So that way I've had a good experience with the editing side of things. Per 
per se on those lines as well. So broadly, let's just wait for it to work through the changes. And then I'm going to show you how the final portfolio of my website looks like. What I will also do is I will quickly go ahead and deploy this on Vercel. So I'll show you how quickly it really is in order to, in case you want to build your websites right now. So apparently all the to do's are done and this is how it looks like, which I personally think that it's not uh, very good. So obviously I'm going to be working on the design side of things. I want like a more gamified UI and a more minimal single page, no scroll setup, right? So let's just tell that as a follow up prompt. I want a more minimal, minimal UI with a single page setup. I should not need to scroll. Use yash.png for image of the instructor and keep text protests and more game like no i don't want to do game like cloud okay let me just go to cloud because i like the background that cloud uses let me see if i can find it or let me go to anthropic i really like this background so i'm going to go to i can take a screenshot here i'm going to copy it here I'm going to do hex code for from image. How do I upload the image? Okay, use, use your image. So this is the hex code. Okay, I want a more minimal UI with single page setup. You should not, I should not scroll. You should not be in the constructor. Keep text grotesque and use this color for background of the page should be nice and warm to see okay let's see what happens once we do this now obviously it's still trying to run the development server which i manually run here which is why it's kind of stuck so i'm going to do esc and it's going to stop the previous execution and then i'm going to put the new prompt and then it should hopefully make the changes accordingly okay so it looks like there is an error with cloud code right now it's not able to access cloud i believe strangely it only happens when i'm <laughs> showing you guys the demo of certain things uh, this hasn't happened to me before so 529 i guess would usually mean that cloud code is busy or server is down or something is right so let me see if i'm able to access this in the ui let me go back to this and i'm gonna say hello to test if everything is working fine here yeah, it looks like everything is working fine here so i don't know what the error is and i'm gonna do Control c twice to stop this and then do cloud again and this time I'm just going to press the up arrow button to get my old prompt and I'm going to see if it works now. I had to interrupt it the last time around. Now it's working. For some reason it broke and I'm not really sure what happened. But now it's going to retake the context from your app and try to do the similar thing in the app now. So I need to add my image in this which I'll do in a little bit. Let me just find a image that I can use right now. And then I can obviously change that in the future. Okay, so I'm going to use this right now. I'm going to do yash.png and then I'm going to say allow during this session. Let's see how things work out. Okay, so it's starting to make changes in the app, which will not be reflected immediately. So let's just wait for it to make changes. I actually want to remove the background of this image very, very quickly. You can see it has made changes. It's still editing, but it has added the background. Either way, if I, if I go to this page, remove background dot pics upload my image here and then it is automatically going to remove the background from the image okay so the background is removed i'm going to download this image and then i'm going to add this here going to delete the old image with the background and going to use this new image without the background So you can see it did change the background color and now it's working on improving the design. Let's just give it a few more seconds. You can see it's uh, working on the single page UI piece right now, editing the main page.tsx and then it's going to apply the font in the app. So let's just wait for it to do this. Okay, it now has too little content. Uh, to get any sort of rank and the buttons also i don't like as such so i want the buttons to be of this color i'm going to copy this go back to color picker thing I'm going to paste it here I'm going to say colors for cta 
image yash.png is in public folder and also i think we have very little content please add more details so like a left right type of ui talking about the experience expertise hobbies and then few of our customers like So I'm just going to make changes in my app very, very quickly. Going to take some time, going to prompt and make changes to the portfolio. So I've reached this point so far. And I think in to some extent, this is doing okay. And obviously I've told it to make a few more changes right now. But what I can do is I can start pushing some basic code uh, of my app to, uh, you know, Vercel. I'm going to delete these ones that I don't need. And then I'm going to quickly go to my GitHub, create a repository for this and push my code here. So I'm going to create new repository. I'm going to keep this public so that you guys can also access it. I'm going to say Yash AI Instructor Portfolio and then I'm going to keep it public and then I'm going to create new repository. I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to start a new terminal and I'm going to say use cursor in order to generate my commands, add origin. I'm going to add the link here so this will add our remote origin and i'm going to do git add all git commit minus m first commit and then i'm going to do git push origin main and there you go so if i refresh now my code should be here which means my initial uh, commit is done now i will go to our cell i will create a new project and i'm going to look for this link going to add the link here because this is an open source repo i should be able to you know add without really okay so i i will need to import my own repo because it will create a new fork out of this so i'm going to go back back again and i will need to configure my app in order to work with this repo so let me quickly go ahead and do yash since it will not be able to find the app, I'll configure it and I'm going to quickly pause here. So I needed to do some authentication and now it's here. I'm going to import this, no environment variables, just deploy this. And this should be live in a few seconds if there are no issues, which we will check in a little bit for now. It is saying that all the changes have been done. So let's just quickly review this. I think this is okay for now. I can push it to my app. You can see it's deploying it. If there are no errors, it will deploy to in order to check errors. You can also do one run build and this will quickly make sure that there are no errors. If there are errors, you will need to use cursor or plot to fix them before you deploy. It looks like there are no errors. So we should be good to go, to be honest. And yeah, the project is live. If you click here, you should be able to open this and we can also add domain now that the project is ready. Let me go to my app and add domain. I have a let's just do goyashi.com and i will need to do some configuration in my name cheap you can see I, I need to add these two items in my dns records i'm going to quickly do that okay so now what we will do is create an a type and c name we can go ahead and add a type and add new record and we will add a c name this needs to be a at the rate and this needs to be www and you, you can also see that these are mentioned here then i'm going to copy the value of this and i'm also going to be copying the value of this I'm going to paste it here save all changes in some time the app should now be visible to the end users like i said this takes some time so i'm going to do goyashi.com right now it's not ready it should be live in some time but this is the process you would typically follow in order to deploy your website i don't know how long it will take maybe a few minutes but once this is live you should be able to see it and i'll add the link you can see this is already live um, but to be honest this kind of takes some time to propagate all the way so let's just wait for a few more minutes um, and i think you guys can check it once it's live anyways it's deployed so if you click this link you will be able to find it here but the domain propagation takes some time cool so thank you so much for going through this i hope you guys were able to understand what cloud code can do note that it can also run your applications and if you do question mark it will show you a bunch of different commands that you can 
also run or use in case you want to just do esc twice in order to exit cloud code or do control c in order to stop cloud code so thank you so much for watching guys i think it's been a good learning curve for you guys and for all of us as well and i'll see you guys in the next one